What's up guys, it's Jay here, from, and welcome back to another episode of TV Time with Jay, and this time we are going to be talking about The Boys Season 2 premiere, which basically covers the first three episodes of The Boys Season 2, and, you know, so, basically, unlike last time, where The Boys did a binge drop, where they released all eight episodes at once, uh, what they're doing this time around is doing the uh, first three episodes today, then the next five episodes will be one per week. So every Friday we got a new episode of The Boys. So, of course, I'll be covering the entirety of the season as the episodes drop. So, as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. And I'm speaking a little quietly because it's currently like almost 4.30 by the time I finish those episodes. So like I gotta be a little bit quieter. So uh, excuse the lack of enthusiasm or volume. But holy shit, this premiere was massive. There are so many different plot lines that we, want, we have to discuss here. So first off, F in the chat for the deep. This guy, this guy is just at the absolute low low point so much so that he basically joins the superhero equivalent of the church of scientology and um you know he does get a little bit of a kind of self-reflection and he gets to kind of realize his uh, inferiority complex but again it's because he ends up joining the superhero equivalent of the church of scientology and once again, the deep is just kind of used as the butt of the joke of the entire show. Like, the one time he tries to be cool, he ends up fucking it up and getting a poor innocent whale killed. So yeah, F in the chat for the deep. Fucked up again. Alright, so the biggest plot lines we have are Huey, uh, Huey and Starlight, Kimiko and her brother, um, Homelander and the Becca situation and of course uh, the introduction of our newest member of the seven Stormfront so let's talk about all this okay so first off the boys are at the end of their rope they have no idea what the fuck to do they are at their breaking point and they are ready to kill each other just because they are out of options. They don't know what to do next. And Huey, you know, he's clinging just barely to this hope of doing something that'll finally end this. Take Vod down. And so he and Annie are working together to try and get some Compound V to expose Vod. Um, and, you know, it ends up working out. Uh, Vod gets investigated. But they end up turning it around by flipping it and, you know, putting the blame on Kimiko's brother, who basically, after the massacre at his village, was recruited by a radical superhero, uh, super terrorist group, basically. Like a, like a uh, metahuman terrorist group. And so he now wants to, you know, destroy all the Americans because he blames the Americans for what they did because, obviously... <laughs> that is, they are the direct cause of this. And so, he is out here, full on pulling an Akira on people, like, because he's a, like, crazy high level telekinetic. It's uh, pretty nuts. But yeah, so, uh, the Kimiko storyline is pretty intense. You know, she finally sees her brother again. She, you know, in a sense, Reconnects with her humanity. Uh, you know, her brother is all she has left of her previous life. He's her kind of final connection to the world. And so, this is her hope. And that's why, you know, it's so heartbreaking just to see them reconnect. Him finally trusting her again. Him being there for her. Him trying to protect her. And him actually realizing that the boys, you know, are her new family. Are trying to help her. Uh, but he realizes that too late, and whew, he ends up being murdered by Stormfront. 
and now Kimiko is out for blood. The female of the species is ready to attack and this bitch Stormfront deserves to die because she is just as bad as Homelander if not even worse. Like she kind of reminds me of like kind of the character archetype if you've ever read Kingdom Come. She sort of reminds me of a uh, Magog or however you pronounce it. You know the main antagonist of uh, not the main antagonist but the person in Kingdom Come who like killed the Joker in the beginning of the story. That guy. Her personality very much reminds me of that. And she has this outer guise of this just, you know, social justice rebel type. Like, you know, fuck the system. Fuck what everybody thinks. Um, it's mostly just because she herself has a god complex and feels like she's above everything. So, fuck these humans, right? Uh, so, yeah, fuck her. Nah, fuck her. Um, obviously, Annie is still feeling really conflicted about this whole thing and... She gets into some hot uh, water when A-Train, you know, is on her trail, but then she calls A-Train to bluff, and A-Train's a little bitch, so A-Train doesn't do anything about it. Uh, and then we get to probably the most uncomfortable portion of the episode, which, or the three episodes, which is the plot line surrounding Homelander, um, Billy's wife Becca, and Homelander's son Ryan. So... Um, Becca made a deal uh, that, you know, if they kept Homelander the fuck away and let her raise her kid, you know, she would do whatever they said. However, now Homelander knows, and Homelander wants that family. You know, that's something he was robbed of, of his child, from his childhood, right? And so he feels like he's no longer alone. Because since he's like the Superman figure, he's at the top of the world, it's lonely at the top, and he wanted someone to share it with. Uh, you know, and you kind of see this in a lot of like Superman stories, which is why you get like, which is why Jonathan Kent was such a refreshing, like, addition to the Superman status quo. It has, it gives Clark someone to pass his values on to. Um, someone to kind of show the ropes and it, now he like doesn't feel alone there is someone like him out there now he is no longer the last son of Krypton I mean even though he never was because you know Kara is a thing and all the other stuff but that's kind of how Homelander feels but it's a much more twisted version because now he's like there are more there's another god there's someone that can be on my level I don't have to be alone and I can show him I can show him that we're better than these humans, but Ryan is a good kid, and when Ryan sees, like, how little, like, Homelander thinks of him, he just pushes him off a roof, he, like, starts manhandling his mom, Ryan's like, no, fuck you, I'm nothing like you, leave us the fuck alone, which, good on you, kid, good on you, fuck him, he's a dickhead, um, but basically, now... Uh, since they weren't able to capture and bring in Kimiko's brother safely, uh, the CIA basically cut ties with them. The boys are back to square one, and now they have the seven on their back. Um, holy shit. And I'm sure now Huey thinks, because it looked like to him that Starlight was ready to kill him in front of Homelander, but I have a feeling that, you know, Annie was just going to turn on Homelander if it wasn't for Billy stepping in at the last second. But of course, now Billy and, you know, Huey are back on good terms, but now Huey just has kind of lost all hope now. And he's going to end up turning into Billy, and that's going to be an interesting character shift, especially if they, you know, follow the path of the comics for Huey's character and uh, the changes he goes through. So, it'll be very interesting to see just where the season takes it. Um, so far, this premiere is really strong. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the action sequences were great. I loved all the different character dynamics. Stormfront was a very interesting swerve. I loved how they played that. And, um, you know, I really do feel for Maeve and, you know, her ex-girlfriend and all this other stuff that's going on. There's so many complicated, just interpersonal relationships in the boys, and that's what I think makes it such an interesting show. Uh, overall, 
really enjoyed this premiere and I cannot wait to review each and every episode as they come out uh, every week. There are eight in total and uh, we've got five more to go so uh, buckle up people. We are in for one hell of a fucking ride and I hope you get to join me for each and every part of it. Uh, but until then, uh, this is Jay from TV Time with Jay and I'll catch you in the next review. In the outro card I will leave linked a video YouTube series algorithm things you might like as well as my most recent upload. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. And also, if you like anime stuff and you want to see more of my weebie side come out, definitely subscribe to my anime channel, Jay's Caldea. I'll leave that link in the description as well. And if you want to come, you know, chat with me as I play video games, I am on Twitch also. Uh, you can follow me up there. I stream Monday through Thursday uh, with occasional stuff on the weekends. Well, Monday through Friday, and I, you know, sometimes during the weekends. It all depends. But yeah. Definitely check that out as well. Link is in the description, of course. And, like I said, I'll catch you later. Stay super. Peace.